Hello, welcome to another maintenance vlog from Voodoo Marine in Fiji this week. We bought our Starlink literally the last minute as we were leaving New Zealand and I didn't get a chance to install it properly until we arrived in Fiji. Incidentally, I'd just like to thank Scott Nugent, a fellow ammo owner who produced some fantastic instructions for this job. Thanks Scott, they came in really handy and I'll be using those instructions to convert the system to a 24 volt system in the near future. So we've got a little dishy. Um, we've got the new Starlink setup and um, we need to mount it. Now, up until now, uh, I've, all I've been doing is putting it on the deck and tying it on when we're at an anchorage uh, and then plugging in just in, in the inverter uh, on the 224. Uh, and it's been working fine, but obviously it's not a permanent solution and uh, it's not a safe solution either because we have to t dismantle the whole thing once we've uh, finished with it and uh, stow it for passage, um, which isn't ideal because we part of the reason that we got it was so we could use it offshore. I've been watching the uh, Starlinks on Boats Facebook group for a while, watched a couple of videos and uh, there are hacks actually to, uh, to mount it on a boat. It's kind of set up for, for static installation. And uh, the reason for the motor is, is so you don't have somebody on the roof trying to kind of wiggle it um, while somebody down below is kind of trying to find the signal. Um, that's a great idea, but for boats, it's, um, it's not a good idea because the, with the pitching and the rolling of the boat, um, the motors can't keep up. And uh, even within a few seconds on an anchorage, even if you just move around a little bit, then suddenly it's pointing in the wrong direction and has to reset itself or you've got to reset it yourself. There is a hack which means um, disabling the motor um, but you've got to drill into the back of the, of the dishy and uh, pull out the little wires to uh, disconnect the motors um, and on a brand new bit of technology like this it's a bit nerve-wracking. Um, a few people have already done it and I've been looking at the videos online and uh, I'm quite confident I know what I'm doing now. Uh, the only other thing is mounting it on the boat. Um, there isn't any dedicated boat mounting kits um, and so you kind of got to do it yourself really. Um, and what I did is I, I got a couple of uh, fishing rod holders, some stainless steel fishing rod holders, and uh, I got a local welder here in Fiji to kind of uh, to uh, hack it to bits and put it together to a design that I wanted, which would have sat it absolutely perfectly on the solar arch, flush with the solar panels. And so there'd be no overshadowing. Solar panels wouldn't overshadow the dishy and the dishy wouldn't overshadow the solar panels. Unfortunately, he didn't do it to the design that I gave him. And, and kind of did the whole thing kind of upside down. Um, so there was quite a lot of modifications I had to do with the grinder to kind of get it back to where I wanted it. It's not perfect, but it'll, it'll do. Um, it just means this is gonna be sitting about a few inches high of the solar panels, which is not really a problem, I suppose, unless the sun is really low in the sky, it's not gonna do any overshadowing. It sticks out of the side of the solar arch a little bit. Um, the only problem with that is uh, it's fine at sea, but when we're coming into docks, say uh, on uh, fuel docks and things like that, the solar panels do tend to get a little bit close to the uh, to the dock sometimes. If you can pick up satellite Wi-Fi around the world, then uh, it truly is a, a game changer. Um, a lot of people are kind of lamenting the fact that you can't get off grid anymore now. A lot of people do enjoy that few weeks at sea when you're doing the passages just to be cut off for the outside world. Um, and so that will no longer be the case. I guess if you're going to unplug it, but. Uh, there's no excuses now if, uh, if a boss wants to give you a call or granny wants to call and have a video chat with the kids. So let's get on with it. I had to measure five inches from the top and the side. Um, basically inside there's just a big circuit board with a, with a couple of plugs. I think there's only two plugs actually now. One is for the, uh, the, the connector for the motor and one is the connector for the router. So on somebody, somewhere along the line, has taken the whole thing off, have a look at it, measured it and uh, passed on that bit of knowledge which saves us a lot of time and energy. Um, the, the holes I've seen drilled um, are not quite over where you need to get it, but I think that's because there's some reinforcing battens on the back of the plastic to hold it rigid. Um, so I think that is the closest area you can get to it without actually drilling into one of these battens. It wasn't fully explained in some of the videos, but you have to put it into WTF mode. The leg, if you want to call it a leg, um, will orientate the dish pointing straight up. It only does that for a few seconds and then it returns to stone mode again. What you have to do is unplug it when it's at the optimum level and you only get a couple of seconds to do that. So you've got to wait till it's in the W2F mode as they call it, unplug it and then you're ready to disable the motors. So W2F mode is when the dish can't understand what's going on and it kind of spins out, hence WTF. You can get it into this mode by lying it flat on the ground for about 30 seconds with the power on, at which point it does a quick sweep of the sky putting the leg perpendicular to the dish before it returns to storage mode. 
So you get a split second to pull the plug at about 90 degrees. The rake is actually doing a head in because she thinks I'm just procrastinating a lot when I am because I really don't want to break this. In the great scheme of things, it's quite a cheap bit of kit really for what it does, but um, to us it's still, still a lot of money. So um, I don't want to break it. Prices have halved since we bought ours about a year ago, by the way. That is a, a one inch force and a bit. Um, or 25 mil if you want to be in the modern world. It's not a hole cutter, it kind of grinds out the, uh, the middle bit. A hole cutter would have been better, but I couldn't get hold of one, so that, that's the best I can achieve. So after all that prep and research, this happened. What happened, Dad? I just drilled in the wrong place. The video I was looking at, this was pointing away from the hole. So I copied the diagram, but when I look at the diagram, this is actually pointing towards the hole. The antenna must have turned completely around at some point. And I've used that as a frame of reference rather than that as a frame of reference, and I've got it wrong, so I've drilled the hole in the wrong place. So I suppose having kids around helping does temper your language at times like this. Yeah. Unbelievable. What are you doing now? Lining up for the other hole. 12.7 centimetres from there, 12.7 centimetres from there, or five inches if you want to call it that. Look at that. So this thing's going to end up looking like a Swiss cheese by the time I finish with it. <laughs> and now a quick plug for a little initiative we're trying. Have you ever dreamt of a lifestyle like this? Well here's some really exciting news for you. You can have access to comprehensive guidance crafted by us, the Renker and Woody, seasoned world cruisers, yachting instructors and parents. We've taught thousands of people how to sail and as a cruising family we've sailed tens of thousands of miles across the world's oceans. Now you can access that knowledge from our Patreon platform. So if you want to shift your life from traditional school and work towards boat schooling, remote working, minimalist living and a remarkable life experience, then find out how by visiting www.mothershipadrift.com or click on the links in the description below. See you out there. So do check out our Patreon platform. We're uploading loads of useful resources up there on a weekly basis for anyone who's trying to escape the rat race. But now back to making Swiss cheese out of your styling dish. So next I had to disconnect the motor plug from the circuit board with some tweezers. There it is. We'll stick that around there. Nice bright cable tie so I don't lose it. So the cable tie would just make it easier to retrieve that plug should I need to reinstate the motor at some later point. So the next thing was to plug the holes. So I've got a 23mm cap, rubber cap there, and the 25mm didn't seem to fit, I just couldn't get it on at all. Uh, and this one seems to be sort of more in line with that hole, so uh, we'll give that one a try. Um, I know it's going to be on the underside, but drips can kind of come down and find their way in the gap. So if I put a little bit of Sigaflex around the edge, uh, hopefully that'll act as a, as a drip guard on both holes. So that was the scary part out of the way, now it was time to fix on the mount. I found the clamps were just a little bit too wide for the diameters of the poles. So I had to cut a few short lengths of hose just to squeeze in between the clamps and the poles. So behind here is where all the uh, conduits go. Well, not all of them, but uh, two of the main ones. And uh, one of those is the old SSB cable run, which I now use as the, the solar cable run. Um, but there's still plenty of space left in there. So I'm gonna use that for the Starlink cable run. So I did have a mouse in there, but I pulled it out by accident. So uh, I had to start again with that. So that's taken about an hour to sort that out. Um, but now um, we've got it through. I've uh, tied the Starlink cable to it with the, uh, the end plug on there and try to make it as streamlined as possible um, and then pull it through from the lazarette. The other conduits on the boat tend to kind of go in and out of cupboards and kind of go around the corner and through little holes whereas this runs all the way to the back of the boat into the lazarette and then I can feed it from the lazarette up the solar arch and onto the Starlink mount at the other end. So 
So now I'm going to get this over to the other side of the lazarette, over the deck, and up the uh, up to the antenna. There's, there's a little cutout in the lazarette for the shore cable, and uh, we rarely use the shore cable, um, if ever, even if we're in marinas. Um, so I'm going to use that. It does mean that we're going to have a few inches of uh, cable run over the back of the deck. Um, so obviously we're going to have to be a bit careful with that. It'll save me dr drilling any more holes in the boat and I don't think I'm going to be able to get this up the, the pipes. It's just that little bit too awkward. A quick reminder that if you do find these videos useful and you'd like to return a favor then you can click on the thanks button below this video and buy me a cold one which would be very much appreciated dielectric grease just to protect it a little bit so I'm worried that it's going to lubricate it a little bit and uh, it's going to pull out quite easily. It's not pretty but I used a, a few bits of gaffer tape just to hold that cable firmly in place. The leg should have been hidden in the tubes of the mount, but because of the modifications I had to make, it stuck out the end a little bit. I protected the cable with some cable wrap and then put a cable tie on the end of the leg in case a rogue wave back ended it from beneath. So despite all the problems, it turned out okay in the end, and what's more, it worked, which is always a bonus. I won't go into all of the setup because Starlink have got some really good videos on how to do all that. But a project for the future is to turn the Starlink into a 24 volt system, so I can plug it straight into the boat system rather than going through an inverter. I think my only gripe about the whole setup is the modem design. Elon Musk has obviously gone for that angular Tesla truck sort of look, and it's an absolute bitch to mount securely. There's no brackets and there's no base plate to screw down. So I get a bit creative and have to create a mount above the nav station table. I think what Elon Musk is doing is fantastic and I'm a great fan, but when it comes to design aesthetics, he's definitely no Steve Jobs. So if you're an expert or an old salty sea dog with some insights into this matter, then I would love to hear those in the comments below. That's it, thanks for watching. And be sure to check out our other sailing and travel channel, Mother Ship Adrift. Thanks in particular to our patrons who make all things possible. If you want to become a patron, just follow the links in the description below. You can also check out our merch store with mugs and t-shirts with our Mothership branding.